Legend has it that maple syrup was discovered in the woods on the top of North America, long before settlers of Europe arrived. The First Nations people apparently spotted a squirrel drinking sap out of a tree and thought to give it a try themselves. This sweet sap from a tree that's found across this land is now the symbol that represents it, Canada. The tradition of cultivating this sweet sap, also known as maple syrup, was developed by these people. And much like their land, this tradition would be taken by settlers from across the ocean. Canada's national anthem was even almost going to be this song called The Maple Leaf Forever. The Maple Leaf Forever! But it didn't happen because Quebec didn't like it for being pro-British. Fast forward to the future, and now Canada is best known for maple syrup. Maple syrup and a cup of Timmy's. Anything you can put maple syrup on. All of Canada, it's probably maple syrup. Pancakes with maple syrup. Thanks, Canada. By the way, as someone from New York, the US is also pretty big on maple syrup. Just saying. But my question is, is Canadian food just this? Okay, there's poutine as well. So is the cuisine of Canada the world's second largest country? Basically just one dish and one ingredient? I promise I'm not trying to be that cocky American poking fun at Canada being like, haha, we're better than you. You have to grow up in Canada with America right there. But seriously, most regions in the world have really distinct food. If I were to say Korea, you would probably would think of kimchi or Korean barbecue. If I said Turkey, there's kebabs and those crazy ice cream guys. Even America, a young country that borrows from other cultures, has its own aesthetic. When it comes to Canada, I struggle after poutine and maple syrup. I struggle to imagine an image to Canadian cuisine. And I'm not alone on this. Even a Canadian Prime Minister once said that Canada has a cuisine of cuisines, meaning that Canada has a lot of food from other places and that is the cuisine. But that's not good enough for me. I want to know if Canada has its own culinary tradition, something that is unique to here, or at least something you can best find here. While I'd love to travel across Canada, the country is way too big and it's way too expensive for me to go there right now. So instead, I read a book. Yeah, I can read. I didn't know that either. The main book I chose was this one, Speaking in Cod Tongues by Lenore Newman. In this book, she asks the very same question I'm asking today. What is Canadian cuisine if it does exist? And it turns out, there is a Canadian culinary tradition. And it's an image of Canada that most of us might not actually be exposed to. It's a land with a rich fishing industry, native traditions, and red seaweed that Japan is obsessed with. I'm going to use all of this info and try to get her a more proper image and answer to what is Canadian cuisine. Canada is a patchwork of cultures, but when it comes to food, what is our defining dish? Okay, so in order to answer what is Canadian cuisine, first we need to define what cuisine is. So I'm going to use the definition of cuisine from this book which is that basically cuisine is different regional dishes put together into one national image. Take Italy for example, it's my favorite cuisine and my favorite country in the world. I love Italy. And one of my favorite foods there is lasagna, which is from Emilia Romagna, but carbonara is from Lazio, and modern pizza is from Napoli. But all of it to the outsider is Italian food. Canadian cuisine and any other cuisine is basically the same. Poutine is from Quebec, but now it represents the entire country. Unless Quebec someday leaves, but that's another story. This book also mentions that there's two sides to Canadian cuisine. The Canadian land and the Canadian Creole. The Canadian Creole is basically food brought over from other cultures using ingredients in Canada. What I'm more interested in is the Canadian land, food or traditions that come from this place, this country. So to put together a picture of this country's cuisine, I'm going to take food from across this country and narrow it down to two categories. One, what ingredients are special to Canada? And two, what dishes are special to Canada? I'm separating ingredients because as this book states, 
Rural Canadians refer to nature as a grocery store. This is important to people even in cities. Newman, the writer, went to different food markets in cities across Canada and found that Canadians were very dependent on seasonal foods, which dictated what they ate. So ingredients in Canada often feel more important than any particular dish itself. One of these ingredients is berries. According to this book, berries are essential to Canadian food. It's found with all kinds of stuff. There are tons of berries in Canada. June berries, fake apples, Saskatoon berries. All of these berries are grown in different parts of the country, but they're eaten everywhere. Another seasonal ingredient that's important to Canada is fish, but most specifically, salmon, which this book refers to as the Canadian fish. Now, I know salmon is eaten in a ton of countries. I'm from a country that is obsessed with salmon, and I live in another country that is also obsessed with salmon. Newman illustrates that in Canada, salmon is prepared in almost every way possible. Half of all fish eaten in British Columbia is salmon, by the way. There's even candied salmon, which honestly sounds really good, and I want to try it someday. Cod and lobsters are other seafoods that are special to Canada. Actually, Canada has a border dispute with the US over this island between the two countries. Canada is even fighting against the US over this island because it has lobsters, and the lobster industry in this region is just so important. But some ingredients in this region are more important overseas than in Canada, like red seaweed or dulse. In this book, Newman went to this island, Grand Manan, which honestly looks amazing. Newman talked to the people who gathered this unique seaweed, which requires handpicking them from cold, slippery rocks. This was hard work, and most people in Canada don't even eat it. While the locals on this island sometimes use it as a spice or toast it like popcorn, the large bulk of it goes to Japan, where it's used for seasoning. But of course, the number one ingredient in Canada is this. And yeah, Saturday. Saturday is National Maple Syrup Day. Of Canada's secret maple syrup reserve. There really is one. Yeah. There wasn't enough maple syrup for my father's pancakes. You guys have gold and important things. And there is a secret reserve in a hidden location in Quebec of maple syrup. One thing that makes maple syrup especially important to Canada is that it was a tradition developed by native tribes way before Europeans even knew this place existed. There are tons of legends among indigenous people on how maple syrup was discovered. One story followed the chief of a tribe throwing an axe at a tree and discovering the sap inside. Another story followed people who saw a squirrel drinking sap out of a tree and thought to give it a try themselves. It's possible that many tribes discovered maple syrup individually, as each tribe has its own name for maple syrup. Many tribes actually had their own organized sugar farms for producing maple syrup, a system that Europeans would eventually copy. Maple syrup is now a massive product in Canada, and in particular Quebec, and a $360 million industry. But Canada obviously isn't just all maple syrup. There's other big ingredients across the country, like Alberta beef, which is considered to be some of the best beef in the world. My list of Canadian foods I need to try just keeps getting longer. Actually, I'm beginning to realize that I've been to Canada three times and I've like never really had Canadian food, except for maple syrup and poutine, so I really need to go back to Canada actually. But okay, next let's talk about Canadian dishes. Now again, Canada is more focused on ingredients than dishes, but there are a few standouts here. We might as well start with the biggest one, poutine. The dish came from Quebec in the 1950s, but it was mostly unknown to the world until the early 2000s. Apparently before it became popular in the world, Canadians used to mock the dish. Some say this was because Canada didn't want Quebec to feel pride and emboldened to leave the country. I don't know about that, I'm not Canadian. If you're Canadian, you can fight in the comments, don't kill the messenger. But eventually, poutine did become popular, and now it's a symbol that represents the country. A Canadian food critic even once said that Canadian dishes are too similar to their European roots, with the exception of poutine. I mean like, damn, this is just gravy and fries with cheese. But to Canadians, it matters a lot. It's become so Canadian, it's even eaten on Canada Day, which, by the way, is a holiday I didn't even know existed until now. 
Like, they really don't teach you about anything Canadian in the US. Over here in the Niagara Peninsula is another institution that's quickly growing. Ice wine. Sounds like something out of Game of Thrones. Ice wine is this dessert wine made out of frozen grapes still on the vine. Canada is a really cold place after all. And while ice wine is mostly from Germany, Ontario just became a way better place to actually produce it. So much better that Canada is now actually the largest producer of ice wine in the world. Another Canadian food I really want to try is butter tarts, which is a tart with butter. It's apparently made differently depending on where you get it from, and the origin of the dishes is still kind of unknown. Not much to say about it, it's just one of the very few dishes definitely from Canada. Finally, we're going to British Columbia where Nanaimo bars are from. Again, this is another food that I've never heard of. It's a dessert bar with three layers, an unbaked chocolate cake on the bottom, custard in the middle, and dark chocolate coating on top. Yeah, this and butter tarts are definitely not meant to be healthy. In the book, Newman basically calls this dish a rule breaker of the Canadian food aesthetic she builds for most of the book. The aesthetic of Canadian cuisine being one that's mostly focused on farming fresh, local, or wild ingredients. And unlike butter tarts, which uses maple syrup and other Canadian ingredients, Nanaimo bars are almost always entirely made out of branded products, kind of like something you'd find down in the States. But that's the deal with Canadian cuisine. It's influenced by two very different cultures. For one, the land of Canada and the food it provides is really similar to somewhere like Scandinavia, and the way Canada eats some ingredients, like salmon and cod, mirrors places like in Iceland and Norway. Though instead of being rooted off of the culture of Vikings, Canadian cuisine is rooted off of the traditions of the First Nations people. But Canada is also a new country, and mostly developed alongside the US, making its modern urban culture very similar to America. In the process of that, I think the line between Canadian food and American food became blurry. Anything that came from Canada and became popular enough often just got absorbed into American culture. Hawaiian pizza, for example, is from Canada. Like, Hawaiian pizza is from Ontario, Canada. But most people think it's American, and it's even named after an American state. Ultimately, Canada has a culinary tradition. It's just less organized than some other cultures right now. But Canada is working on it. The country is now finally beginning to show off and appreciate its own cuisine. Remember, the world only found out about poutine like 20 years ago, and now it represents the entire country. Who knows what else is hiding? Not to mention, Canada already has really good food from other cultures. The fact that Canada embraces cuisines from other parts of the world while finally also beginning to embrace its own cuisine makes me really excited for Canada. This country might actually become one of the best countries in the world for food. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that video and hope that if you're a Canadian, it was accurate and respectful. So I'm just here because the year is now finally coming to an end and I just realized that this is basically the first year of this channel. Uh, it's been a really interesting ride. Yeah, so when I started this channel, I kind of honestly didn't expect to, you know, make it this far. I was just thinking about making a handful of videos for fun, and now it's, you know, becoming a real regular thing for me to do. And it's really cool. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to travel to a lot of different countries this year and record uh, a lot of different things and I learned about stuff that I had no idea about before starting this year off, before starting this channel off. And reading this book, Speaking in Cod Tongues by Lenore Newman, was incredibly, incredibly insightful. 
Um, I didn't want to include too much from the book because I really think if you're interested in this topic, if you're interested in Canadian cuisine, it's a fascinating book to read. If you like more videos like this, especially videos where I go around and travel to different parts of the world and try to discover different unique food cultures or histories or whatnot, then please consider subscribing and commenting, liking, whatever helps. But yeah, otherwise, it's not a holiday season. Christmas and New Year's are both coming up. Uh, hopefully by the time this video is out, Christmas hasn't happened yet, but I can't promise anything. But otherwise, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and see you in the next video.